the unofficial Sims cookbook. I mean, if you played The Sims growing up, this is gonna be full of nostalgia. Some of the recipes here are straight up hilarious. Things that look strangely pixelated, like that's not a real chicken. I don't wanna eat this. And recipes that are literally known for setting your kitchen on fire. So here I've got a pot with four lobster tails because this is the very first recipe that we're going to follow the lobster thermidor from the sims 2 3 and the sims 4 so this is a very iconic i would go as far as saying generational recipe so we're gonna make this the first step is to boil the lobster which we've already done but then we're supposed to remove the meat of the lobster from the tail i'm trying to come to terms with the fact that i have spent 60 dollars in lobster to make a recipe from the sims why do lobsters have little legs okay i'm gonna try to insert the knife is this the cleanest of the jobs? No, but I mean, it is working. We're getting the meat out. I just don't know how I'm gonna remove the rest of the tail. I'm not particularly thrilled about this, but the one lobster tail actually has more meat than I was thinking. Okay, there we go. I would say we've done a pretty good job here. And maybe using some scissors, I'm just gonna clean this up on the sides. Now there's lobster all over my kitchen. Things that people on a different tax bracket say. So in the end, you get the meat from the lobster and you get a very clean lobster tail. This is one of those recipes on The Sims that you need to go to culinary school. I feel like I've done it, you know? You don't really need all that education. So I've successfully separated the meat from the shell of four lobsters. And we ended up with surprisingly a large amount of the meat. So I don't know if these are really good lobsters or if this is standard because usually I trust a chef by the name of Red Lobster to do this job. Now we're going to make the filling to add to the meat. I'm well aware that this is not your standard breakfast, but because we start so many of these videos with breakfast, I find the best recipes and I start with the best ones because if you don't got an hour to watch one of my videos in its entirety, then I want you to leave with the best part of the recipes. And this one was my favorite one, the lobster one. Everything I've learned was through Cooking Mama, so if you have any complaints, please take it to Mama. And then two cloves of garlic. How do you miss garlic? I have no idea. Sometimes it's hard to, to do a good job at shopping because I also am aware where the camera is. I'm doing a lot of jobs here at the same time. I just make it look so easy, you know? It's not perfect, but I'm gonna say this is good enough. In a medium skillet over medium heat, so let's say five, we're gonna add the butter and the vegetable oil. So there goes the butter. One thing my membership at the Red Lobster has taught me is that lobster loves butter and butter loves lobster. It's a beautiful relationship if you think about it. To the butter, we're gonna add the vegetable oil. I think the reason why we're adding oil is because butter burns very quickly and the oil kind of stops that from happening. It kind of delays the process. Now that this is nice and foamy, we're gonna add just the onion first. And this is supposed to cook for four minutes exactly until this is basically soft and kind of see-through. Next up, we're gonna add the garlic. And this is only supposed to cook for 30 seconds, cooking at the same temperature and hoping for the best because we don't want this to burn. And trust me, when I'm playing The Sims, I burn the kitchen, I burn the house. We've all been there. Sometimes I do it for the drama, but not when it's my own house. And finally, we're going to transform this into a nice thick sauce. So we're going to start by adding the flour. And we got to cook this down for like a good 30 seconds, I think. We're going to mix this. This looks really good and foamy, so we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, I'm waiting for the right moment to add the wine. I want to get as much flavor here. I want to deglaze this, kind of. This is kind of ready. It's going a little bit toasty, so I'm gonna add the white wine. Ooh, that smells like expensive fancy cooking. Why is it looking grainy? To this, we're gonna add the half and half. Man, I am really praying here. I don't know, a little lumpy, I'm not gonna lie. Little lumpy would be my drag queen name. So I added another splash of half and half. He needed a little bit more liquid. So right now I think this is what it's supposed to look like, which is a thick, but not lumpy sauce. Simmer the sauce until very thick. Would we consider this very thick? I think so. That is a very thick sauce. Remove from the heat and add the tarragon, salt, and pepper. One quarter of a teaspoon of tarragon, one quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper, and one quarter of a teaspoon of salt, which is stuck here, but it's fine. And we're gonna whisk this again. 
Now we're talking. Now this is looking correct. To this we're gonna add the parmesan cheese and we're gonna leave around two tablespoons in here. So not the full amount of parmesan cheese and most importantly the lobster meat. So this better not fail me. And that is it I think. The texture of this it becomes like a paste. This is the world's most expensive tuna melt because that's what the texture is giving. It's meaty, creamy at the same time, so I'm gonna see we're done here. So I switched my oven to the broiler setting, which is kind of like the, the toasty setting. That's what everyone calls it. Who says broiler? Boiler? Broiler? So I've got my lobster tail here, and it's there are lobster juices all over my house. Get over it. And I'm gonna get some of my filling that somehow ended up lumpy again. I don't know. These ingredients cost real money. Unfortunately, I can't mother load this one. So we're going to fill up our lobster tails. Why do I got so much mixture? Fine, I'll eat it with a spoon. This is kind of like the perfect vessel for this cream because it does stay in here. This is so cute. I love filling things. You know those ice creams that it's like a coconut and you eat the coconut ice cream from the actual coconut shell? It's messed up to eat the product in its own shell, but it's so satisfying. Not the cannibal tendencies. I'm gonna fill up all the other shells and then we're gonna do the toasty topping. I really tried here, but this is as much as I could fill up the lobsters. Like, it literally will not take one more ounce, one more milligram of the stuffing. Like, this is it. So you end up with enough for another lobster that you just don't have a shell for. Next up, we're gonna make the crunchy topping for the lobster. So these are some breadcrumbs. To this, we're gonna add the two tablespoons left of Parmesan cheese and one teaspoon of olive oil. And I guess we're supposed to just combine this. Kind of like sand texture, wet sand. And finally, we're gonna add this on top of the lobster. Wait, why does that actually look like something that you'd make in The Sims? Except in The Sims, I would press the speed button and this would be done in 10 seconds. How I wish I could do that in real life. No, because the reason why I'm actually impressed is because this is an advanced level dish in The Sims. This is not one of the... One of the easy ones you can make from scratch, like the mac and cheese, and we kind of slay that. So this is also my breakfast, which is, I think, beautiful. Once again, this makes a little bit too much mixture. It makes enough for five. There's a few issues with this recipe. It's not like no waste kind of recipe, which for me is something that is really important, especially when you're using lobster, you know? This is gonna go in the broiler setting for literally three minutes, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Let's have one last look at the lobster thermidor from The Sims. They're the same. They're exactly the same. And I kind of wanted to show you, but is this really, really hot? It's a lobster boat. Why do I want to eat this so bad? Like, it smells so cheesy. This could have not worked out more perfect than this. Like, it's literally exactly the same as the image here in the back. So we're gonna do one right here, one lobster here. I should have invited someone to come over, but then I can eat four lobsters in one sitting, which is what I'm about to do. Come on, look at that. And last but not least, we're just going to decorate this with some parsley, which is what they've done on the image for the book. We made the Sims lobster for breakfast. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna give this a try. It's meaty, soft, and creamy. How can it be all those things, you know? Let's give it a try. It's a pretty good lobster. Did I cook this to perfection? I love the creaminess of it to the point where the breadcrumbs, not necessary. It's, the crunch is not doing much here. Kinda is making me feel like I'm eating the shell. I would remove the crunch toppings. The recipe is not the best recipe. Not everything adds up perfectly in the end and there's a tiny bit left over. The flavors are all there. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Not me being a Karen in the Sims world. This is very, very good. Look, I've eaten half a lobster in literally three bites. Is anyone gonna try this? Hell no. Unless you're the biggest The Sims fan. But if you are, then do try this. We're gonna do a lot of meals throughout this video, so you can't eat too much at breakfast. This is what I consider to be the most iconic The Sims recipe. This is baked Alaska. And to be honest with you, I'm still not sure where this is. So we're gonna find out what baked Alaska is all about. This is baked ice cream, which is why every time you try to make this on The Sims, you often burn your house down, especially in The Sims 2, so...
With a round biscuit cutter, cut each slice of pound cake into a circle. So we're gonna use one of these cookie cutters to get maybe three baked Alaskas out of this. And this is supposed to be one inch, which I had to achieve by stacking very thin layers of cake. So this is my first one. I'm not gonna lie, very satisfying. And hopefully we get, yeah, we did. We get a perfect circle of cake. Let's see if it comes out perfectly. This cake is a little bit dry, but it's gonna be fine because it's gonna go in the freezer. So we gotta repeat this two more times. I think in the recipe makes five, but it's fine. And this is going to be my last one because I'm only doing three. They all came out pretty good. Why do they look like the driest scones in the world? So we've got the cakes and we've got some vanilla ice cream. Scoop the ice cream onto each cake round and transfer to the freezer for two hours. So we're going to grab some of the ice cream and we're just gonna place it on top. And this is kind of soft. It needs to go in the freezer to kind of solidify. I'm gonna do this amount of ice cream. And I'm gonna hope that this doesn't melt. So far, this is pretty easy. I wouldn't know in which step did the Sims burn the house down, you know? I'm really starting to, to judge them a little bit. All that drama for this, for a little bit of ice cream and cake. Was this really worth me having to remove the pool ladder because you burned my whole house down that I worked very hard for? This is gonna go in the freezer for two hours while we prepare the meringue for the outside. So now we're going to create the meringue that's going to go around the baked Alaska. This is the part that goes in the oven and gets toasted. These are four egg whites. This is supposed to be cream of tartar, but I'm actually using vinegar because I don't have cream of tartar. It's gonna be fine. One quarter of a teaspoon of vinegar. And hopefully this is going to become meringue. I think we're supposed to stop when we have soft peaks, when it's not really there yet. And I think I'm kind of there now. And now we're gonna add the white sugar a spoon at a time. Where is the part where the Sims burn down the house? Why am I excited for a fire in my kitchen? Why am I looking forward to that? Things to bring up with my therapist next week. We're gonna add one tablespoon at a time. So this is probably around one tablespoon. It's becoming very shiny, like glossy. I think we're doing it right. I think we're practically there, so I'm just gonna add the full thing and beat again. Look at this. That is the perfect consistency for meringue. And I know that because if I flip this upside down, nothing's gonna happen. It's still here. The recipe is weird because it just says to apply this on top of the cakes and the ice cream and then put it in the oven. That's literally all it says. Except if you look here at the image, you know damn well they used the piping bag to make this look perfect. So please tell me that, you know? So before I get the ice cream out, I'm just gonna fill this up with the meringue, which is actually a really good consistency. That is basically it. And we've got our now very frozen cakes. I think I'm gonna start with the sides. Just sort of cover them all around, but you gotta move very quick here. It is very hard to make this smooth. Maybe I'll, I'll just leave it here. We gotta trap the ice cream in here, so this needs to be well covered. And then using the piping bag, I'm gonna do the swirl effect on top. Okay, maybe I should have just done this for everything. Okay, this makes things a lot easier. For this one, I'm only gonna use the piping bag, so I'm gonna go all around the sides. I'm just gonna use the spatula to smooth it out. For this one, let's start with the top. I'm trying different techniques on all of them, and we're just gonna press it on the sides. Maybe this one will be the best one. I finally understand my Sims. This is very, very difficult. Like, what the hell? If I leave this any longer, the ice cream will melt. So this is going to go in the oven in the broil setting for two to three minutes. That's all it takes. So two to three minutes and I'm going to show you the result. Fingers crossed. It's only been like a minute, but it feels like something is burning. Oh my God, it's burning. Oh my God. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's only been a minute. How is this possible? I understand my sims. How did it burn? It burned in seconds. This was literally in here. Why is it still burning? I understand. I get it. I made so many jokes and I finally get it. Um, the good news is the ice cream didn't melt and it says on here to just serve it immediately. So I guess this is ready to eat. The bad news is it looks like caramelized onion and it's egg whites. 
I don't think the egg white is raw, so that's a positive. It says here this should take two to three minutes. How did it take 30 seconds to get here? I am intrigued to find out what's what happened with the ice cream. Oh my god, the ice cream is in there. Do you see it? How is the ice cream still cold? I am fascinated by the texture of this. Crispy, soft, cakey, and then there's ice cream in there. But most importantly, this doesn't make sense when you look at the image. I'm a little bit mad at this cookbook at this point. I'm not gonna lie. If this was The Sims Careers, I'm employed. This cake is so dry. This was a leftover cake because it was on sale. Why do I kind of like this? It tastes like marshmallow and ice cream and ice cream is frozen, but the outside is warm and gooey. This is so delicious. Wait, cause this is better than the lobster. I think these recipes, they're very confusing, but I don't blame the author. Like this is from a video game, you know? What are you really expecting? It's not Martha Stewart, you know? They don't always work out and you need to kind of fill in the gaps with the steps. But today I found out that Baked Alaska, one of the greatest things I've ever tried, truly. I was thinking what I'm gonna have for dinner and then I thought, why don't I just cook the meal that I cook the most when I'm playing The Sims? And the meal that I probably cook the most often on The Sims 4 is butter chicken. Probably not authentic, so like, please, please, please don't cancel me. I especially love that this one actually looks like the dish on The Sims. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what the peas look like on it. I believe this is supposed to be one pound of boneless chicken breast. I think this is slightly less, but this is how much chicken I had in the fridge, keeping it real. So to the chicken, we're gonna add one teaspoon of garam masala and a quarter cup of Greek yogurt. Just plain yogurt i guess i don't know if he has to be greek i have so many viewers from india this recipe is probably horrifying to you guys and once again i would like to apologize so we're gonna mix this in and this is supposed to be kind of like the marinade it looks pretty good i would personally season it a little bit more but this is what the recipe is asking for so i'm confused so i'm gonna put this in the fridge and then we're gonna carry on with the recipe in about an hour in a dutch oven or deep skillet add the butter on a medium heat so we're gonna add the butter which is i think around two tablespoons and we're gonna melt this before we get the chicken out of the fridge we're gonna add the chicken no me worried about cross-contamination this is my whole personality Oh, this is gonna be so good. It smells amazing already. Immediately the best smell that's ever been inside this kitchen. So we're supposed to let this cook three minutes on each side. Once this is done, we're gonna turn them around, I guess. So the next step is to chop and dice a medium onion. At this point of the video, all my best knives have been used. It is what it is at this point. That's a lot of onion, but I think this is what makes it really delicious. These needed a little bit more spice if it comes to my personal taste, but it's fine. And to this we're gonna add one full medium onion. And this is now going to cook for another five minutes. And I'm really trying not to mess this up. Like I'm cooking as if someone's gonna remove my pool ladder. Someone's gonna build four walls around me with no door. Add the garlic and the cumin and cook until fragrant, around one minute. We're gonna add the cumin and a minced clove of garlic. Not the condensation. And we're gonna stir this. Something tells me that we're kind of done here. The next step is to add the buttered chicken sauce. So this is just a pre-made sauce. This is what they use. And personally, I think it needs a little bit of water. I'm just gonna pick up all the flavors from the bottom. Okay, so picking up all those toasty bits. It looks good and this is supposed to simmer just like this for 10 minutes. So I'm gonna leave it on this kind of like medium low heat. I feel like I've no messed up this time around. I mean, I literally opened a jar of sauce. Let's be honest, this cookbook, you gotta have a passion for the Sims, not a passion for food. I'm sorry, I know they worked really hard on this book, whoever made it, please buy it, support the artist. <laughs> no. Enough. If only you guys could smell how delicious it smells in my kitchen right now. It really does. It smells like a restaurant. This is one quarter of a cup of cream. I am known for loving Indian food, but it actually does look really good. So I'm just going to mix this in a little bit more. And I would say it's ready because the chicken, it's so soft that it's falling apart and the color looks perfect. I'm gonna switch it off. You can definitely top it up with some 
parsley, fresh parsley, which actually, it really does something because it's so much of the same color. This has actually been a very nice day of eating interesting things, but we still got a lot to go through, so don't, don't you worry. We're gonna plate this now. I think I'm gonna start with the rice on this side. I'm gonna squish the rice slightly. I'm gonna get some of my butter chicken and place it on this side. I mean, it looks really similar. Most butter chicken looks the same, but then the flavor is really what matters. If we arrange this angle slightly, that literally could be the same thing. I'm gonna add some of the peas that I just microwaved. One here. This is my favorite part because this makes it look like something that was designed for a video game specifically. Butter chicken from The Sims 4 recreated in real life. I cannot get over how animated this looks. It doesn't even look appetizing anymore. Let's try it. Babe, wake up. Your pixelated butter chicken is ready. I need a scoop of the rice and the chicken all together. Honestly, why is he giving? It works. Could he have a little bit more spices? Yes. Could he have a little bit more butter in the butter chicken? Also, yes. Could he have a little bit more salt? Okay, you know what? I'm gonna stop. When you buy this cookbook, you have to realize what you're doing. This is a cookbook inspired by The Sims. It's supposed to be fun and silly and camp. And it is all of those things. So don't expect to make butter chicken from scratch. It's just not what they're doing. However, is this better than any butter chicken that I could have made? Probably not. Could have come up with something better myself. It's still delicious. My most eaten dinner in The Sims 4, now eaten in real life. Life can really be unpredictable. I'm so glad I didn't have to make rice from scratch. I hate cooking rice. I never get the measurements right. It's decent. And for today, that's enough. Growing up playing The Sims, what was the one dish that always stayed in my brain that I would recognize it anywhere? There's only one clear answer. The hamburger cake. If you've been interested in the food part of Sims, you know what this is. In this recipe, they make the cake from cake boxes. It might as well say Betty Crocker on here. I skipped that step because might as well buy it frozen from a bakery. So I did that. So we've got the cake layers. So this should make this easier, hopefully. We're skipping all the parts which involve actually baking. I'm just basically recreating this by looking at the image, which is still very difficult. We've got my cake stand to make this a little bit easier. I made a chocolate frosting and I made a vanilla frosting with some food coloring. We got the Rice Krispies for the top and I also rolled some fun down for the decorations. I bought these cakes from a bakery and they came frozen. They're stuck together even though they're defrosted. I kind of have to work with it with three layers at a time. So I guess we're gonna apply a layer of frosting in the center but not too much because I don't have that much frosting. This is just enough that the whole thing sort of sticks. This is gonna be very amateur. Maybe mine is gonna be like a naked burger cake, you know? Is it perfect? No. Is it good enough? No. Are we gonna go with it? Yes. I will clean it up eventually. I just, I gotta be really careful because I know I don't have enough frosting for the top. Next up, we've got the hamburger layer. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this one as well and just cover the spots where there wasn't enough. This was looking like brown and now on camera it's looking gray and I'm very colorblind, so is this green? Did I accidentally make green? Next up is uh, the burger part. So I'm gonna do a layer on top. You know what? This is fine. And now I really gotta be careful here because I can't go too low because I can't clean it up when it meets the other one. It's giving moldy burger. Like, why is it like grayish? The color combination makes this kind of effective that you kind of forget about the texture. Next up, we're gonna do the lettuce and the cheese. So I'm gonna add my lettuce, which actually kind of looks like lettuce, to be honest with you. Oh, the back was a little messy, but it'll be fine. Then I'm gonna add my cheese, which I'm gonna say this is the front, so I'm gonna make it kind of stick out on this side a little bit. I wish I could stretch it to this side because it's my friend's birthday in three days i was like maybe this will be a great birthday cake and i've been humbled very very quickly i wouldn't give this as a birthday cake to my worst enemy so i'm trying to make this a little bit more round we're gonna place this on top 
and I gotta use all my frosting here to make this look more like a burger. I just hope I have enough. This is all the frosting that I have. Okay, I'm gonna put it all here. It could probably be worse. Call me crazy. I don't think the people in the book actually made the cake because it just, it doesn't look up to pair to the rest of the recipes. I just wish I could smooth out the top. I know this is a lot of frosting, but I do want this to look like a burger. How am I gonna smooth it out? I don't know. I haven't thought about it yet. Maybe like this. I feel like it's kind of giving. And I know like I lie to myself and I gaslight both myself and you guys all the time. This would be a kind of a nice birthday cake. If it wasn't for all the spillage and everything. Maybe we're seeing it too close. Just imagine this from far away. Change the quality of the video to like 360p maybe, if you're watching in 4K. Let's put it this way. If this was what the Krabby Patty looked like, Mr. Krabby can keep the formula. Honestly, we insist. Kind of looks the same, or am I delusional? Like, it looks really similar. Wait, it looks the same. The top needed to be a little more round. So the very last step is some Rice Krispies as sesame seeds. So let me see if I don't overdo it. Oh my God, this was what was needed to kind of make us forget about the texture on top because it's not very smooth. I had an idea, I had a vision. It doesn't always have to come together, you know? Comment down below, would you want this as your birthday cake? The answer would be no, but please keep in mind that I am a very sensitive person. I'm not gonna show you the back because it's, it's a lot worse. <laughs> this was your birthday cake, would it slice? Look at this, this is only frosting. Oh, that's not what you wanna hear when you're cutting birthday cake. Suddenly I've gained so much respect from my Sims characters. That's all I'm gonna say. I also suspect that this bakery sold me the driest cakes they had, like leftover cake practically. Why is this so dry? <laughs> Literally the desert. Pretty dry looking, I'm not gonna lie. It needed frosting and all those in between layers, but somehow we managed to get a slice. I know it's ugly on the outside, but what about the personality? Me when I use Max Motive. This looks even crazier from this angle. Out of 10, the looks of it, it's like a four. And somehow that's a victory today in this video. So here we've got a slice of The Sims hamburger cake and we're gonna give it a try. I'm actually gonna have to eat the part of the frosting to make this bearable. It's so dry. Oh my God, this literally, this is the driest cake in the world. Why did they give me a stale cake? I love this frosting. I tried my best. This was my wild card for the video. I did this one for younger version of myself who was somewhere in a dark bedroom in August playing The Sims throughout the entirety of summer break. <laughs> that explains so much. I was scrolling. I was scrolling? You can't scroll a book, can you? I was scrolling through this book. I was exploring the book a little bit further and I saw this chapter called Beverages, which is essentially alcoholic drinks. And then I thought about it. The first Sims game that I played was The Sims 2, but I was looking into the release of The Sims 1 and the people who started playing The Sims, like The Sims fans, some of them have their own families at this point. They're like full grown-ups. They're past grown-ups. They're, they're on their way to becoming grandparents. So I thought you might need a drink. One of them being called Granny Smash. I think I'll pass. But I ended up going with the love potion. So this is the one I'm gonna make just because it looks really cool. This is the kind of stuff that I make in The Sims. I'm into like the sci-fi part of The Sims, the aliens. I wanna get impregnated by an alien. Please don't take this out of context. Even though I wouldn't say no. I don't drink alcohol, but I know a lot of you guys do. So I'm gonna make you one of these and I'm gonna tell if it tastes good. This is pretty simple. Here's everything you need for the love potion number four. Are you headed to the romance festival? First step is to chill the champagne glasses. So this is supposed to be one tablespoon of strawberry sorbet, except it's gonna be really hard to do this. It's supposed to look cute, so. I'm going maybe a little bit crazy. It's supposed to be just one tablespoon. I love ice cream. We gotta make this go down somehow. So this is supposed to be pink champagne, which is actually really difficult to find. Oh my God, it's like a chemical reaction. I'm not entirely sure what the amounts are supposed to be. It looks pretty. I think this is supposed to mix and it really does. The ice cream mixes with the champagne. So I'm gonna use this for the pink lemonade. Hopefully we're not spilling. Okay, is it, 
Is it becoming more similar in quality? It smells really nice, the pink lemonade. The last step is to top it with some whipped cream and some sprinkles. So we're gonna do the whipped cream now. This is kind of giving, and it was really satisfying to make. The very last step is the pink sprinkles. Oh man, why was this so satisfying? Why do I love making cocktails? I don't want to drink them, I just, I'll make them for you. This was so fun. Is this how people become alcoholics? Mine looks better, even though we don't have the official thing. I think mine looks better than the one in the book. Color wise, this is exactly the same. This is the same picture. I mean, this looks pretty damn good. It looks like love potion number four, you know? It looks exactly like the name of it. This is straight up something from The Sims. This would be amazing for like birthday parties. If you're just hanging out with your friends on like a Friday, your friends get to your house and you're like, and then you drink so much sugar in this and collapse, but worth it. Cheers, how do you say cheers in Sims? Spansa. I'm gonna go with Ophibile. That means I'm hungry. That does not taste like a cocktail. That tastes like straight up dessert. <laughs> it's so good. It's very creamy and milky because of the whipped cream and the ice cream. It's very strawberry realistic. Honestly, this is a bit dangerous. I, I'm gonna regret recommending this to you guys because you could drink 50 of these. What a day. I really hope you guys grabbed a drink, something to eat and sat down and enjoy this video. There's so much nostalgia in these foods and video games that we grew up playing. That's how I imagine that you're gonna enjoy this video. So if you did that, give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and switch my notifications on so you don't miss out on future videos. That is the best way to support my content. I love you guys. I'm gonna be posting a lot more short videos now, also long videos as well. I'm not going anywhere. You're never getting rid of me. I hope you had fun. I love you and I will see you on my next video. Bye-bye.